Welcome to Cinema Cub. This is WKNC's new horror podcast. I'm Natalia, otherwise known as DJ Roxy. I am Mason Baker, also known as DJ Crush. And I'm Sean, also known as Lead Pipe. So to get us kicked off today, we kind of wanted to just go around and lay the foundations for our experience with horror, what we like about it, some things we kind of don't like about it, and just let you, the lovely viewers at home, get a feel for us as your devilish hosts. Yeah, and get to know us. Um, Like, we're still all getting to know each other. Uh, Somehow we all ended up in this room to record about horror. Uh, So it's kind of like, how do we get here? One fateful elevator ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just... Dude, it's like The Shining. <laughs> It's just like The Shining. We are just like The Shining. And also, what's that movie? (laughs) Devil? I don't know. The elevator horror movie? There's an elevator horror movie? Yeah. Wow. We're really showing just how much we know about the media. This is going to be every episode is us going like, have you seen that? No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's like how we come up with like what else to watch. It's so true. You know? (laughs) Like, it's kind of about a journey. Like, we're not really like teaching people. It's just kind of like. If. It's if fun. you are coming we to this podcast to get like a better understanding of the horror medium, you are at the wrong podcast. I think we are the authority, though. Like are we? all of our opinions are a hundred percent fact. I think we are about to be. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Truly. um, I've prepped a few questions to just kind of get things going with the podcast and really set the stage for like this this journey ahead of us. Um, so. I have 10, and we'll see how many we can get through in our uh, episode length. But starting off, we got the classic. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, you can. Oh, I go can, first. You can take us away, Natalia. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, my favorite movie is Ginger Snaps. Um, it's a, mm-hmm. I think, from the year 2000s Canadian horror movie um, about a girl getting her period and becoming a werewolf and wreaking havoc on a bunch of people in town. <laughs> Um, I love it. It's iconic. <laughs> well, I guess kind of what elements of it do you like? Um, oh, I mean, I guess I could say, um, like I did like a women and gender studies class and I found a way to incorporate it into it because we had a unit on women on mon- and monstrosity. Ooh. Uh, and I found that and it was like so so women and so monstrosity um <laughs> i like for for my final i had to make a comic like draw a comic out of like one of the scenes Ooh. yeah i probably have it somewhere uh it's not that good but Lovely. i don't know i just like have that connection to it since i had to spend so much time uh looking at it over and over again and now anytime i'm sad i watch it all right uh sean you want to go next mine i'm a bit of a basic b my favorite horror movie is The Shining. Um, I watched it super late because I watched it for a class last year. I took um, a horror film class, and obviously that was shown. Um, and just the visual elements, the actors, it's just a, like kind of the archetype movie for me, for like mm-hmm. a horror movie. All right. <laughs> DJ Crush. So this is uh, something that I guarantee you I'm going to mention in just about every single episode that we film of this lovely podcast of ours. My favorite horror movie is truly the love of my life. It follows because Mm. not even because it itself is the perfect movie. I can level a decent amount of critiques against it, but it truly encapsulates everything I love about modern horror. It is excruciatingly atmospheric. It is so cleverly shot. It was done on like a shoestring budget and still is a chef's kiss. It's a super effective horror movie. Yes, extremely I, effective. I remember it very fondly. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we're definitely going to mention it in our next episode. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. um, so... And I hope that we find a way to fit in our favorite movies into this next question. Um, I just wanted everyone to describe your journey into the horror genre. Like, what got you into it? 
Do you have any like earliest memories with horror and like what kind of brought you into this room today? Like, do you want to go um, back around? Yeah, we can go the Mason. other direction. So, yeah. uh, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. In kind of preparing for this podcast, I've penned myself as the horror lover who hates horror of <laughs> the podcast. Our scaredy cat. Our scaredy cat. Uh, the medical term, uh, a <laughs> little coward. Diagnosed. Diagnosed. Diagnosed coward. Diagnosed coward. But from a young age, I have always just been kind of fascinated with the supernatural and the macabre so i one of my earliest memories is i was at my dearest friend nick's house hope he's doing well um and (laughs) teen wolf was on the screen and we looked up on youtube how to become a werewolf rituals did they work (laughs) <laughs> <Do> you... <laughs> we're not allowed to give medical advice on this podcast i mean you don't have to drop the tutorial but like did you become we a werewolf medical advice though no medical. unfortunately not Aww. but i feel like that was kind of my catalyst moment on just being a little weird kid which has now led me into horror mm-hmm. as we know it all right i will take it from there um i think it all kind of started on like the various cartoon channels that I was obsessed with as a kid and probably still am a little bit too much. Um, but um, probably my first exposure was Courage the Cowardly Dog. Um, That's a great one. It is, it's genuinely scary even now. Return I don't know. the slab. I was gonna. <laughs> or suffer my curse. <laughs> I was so close to saying that, but I didn't want to just do it. <laughs> just out of nowhere as yeah. you're dogging. Re- return the slap. <laughs> yeah, but every episode, um, Dr. Demento, I mean, whenever they do any like non-traditional animation in it, it was like claymation or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It was always so terrifying. It's jarring. Extremely. It is, but it was still so like fun to watch as a kid. And I was I was a scared kid. Like I had nightlight until I was too old so i don't know how i really latched onto it but it, it was kind of like a it was like cathartic in a way to enjoy something that was scary mm-hmm. instead of being scared by it yeah all yeah. right the oh okay well i have like i have like my whole life to span right now <laughs> so like we talked about this a little bit before but like around like halloween the way that like disney and cartoon network would do like halloween events um I didn't I didn't grow up with cable. So the only time I like got to like watch Cartoon Network was whenever like for my grandfather's birthday we go to the mountains and Cartoon Network would be on but it would be scary Cartoon Network. Uh so like Scooby Doo Zombie Island terrified Ooh, me as a kid. Classic. Um or like there's like this episode of Billy and Mandy where like this like giant alien like sucks up everyone's brains and that like freaked me out as a kid yeah billy and mandy had a weird dichotomy of like comedy and horror obviously like the premise is if anybody doesn't know it's like the grim reaper hangs out with two kids yeah as as you do yeah you know if you're the grim reaper of course (laughs) so i'm kind of going back to the like you said about scooby-doo very brief tangent i promise i will cut myself off uh scooby-doo and the witch's ghost the hex girls Iconic. Number one so, influence for me. So cute. If you ever want to know what I look like in real life, just imagine a fourth X girl. <laughs> <laughs> um so like, yeah, Cartoon Network being terrifying. Um, I actually remember my first nightmare. It was wow. after I watched um Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet the Wolfman. Oh, <laughs> I used to be obsessed it with that. It terrified me. I'm like very quickly realizing I have an uncomfortable amount of like wolf related childhood stories. You should really watch Ginger Snaps if you're such a big werewolf fan. Because my favorite Goosebumps book was The Wolf of Fever Swamp. So mm. maybe I'm we're quickly realizing oh, yeah, things. Goosebumps. I like, kind of forgot, but like I loved reading those. We're quickly realizing things about ourselves on this podcast. Um, but like my like more modern like horror interest, I was. 
I kind of like got really into it um around like that time mostly like 2017 2018 when just like a lot of really good horror was coming out like Mm -hmm. kinds that like we're making like general audiences be like horror can be good question Mm. mark so like that's like when when it get out hereditary and it uh i mean midsummer was like a year or two later but like Mm -hmm. i think like those three specifically like really made a lot of money and made people realize just like how good a horror movie can be Mm -hmm. and i was i watched those and i was like yeah these are really good but like i went back and tried to watch like the classics to like really start to like fill up like my horror registry of knowledge and like uh i did like a horror research project on halloween Mm. so um i that just kind of like led me to keep watching horror and i've liked to analyze them a lot now mm-hmm. which is why i wanted to start this <laughs> yeah and i'm happy to be here <laughs> um <laughs> the next question i have is what are your favorite genres or aspects in a horror movie so like when you're watching like what makes you be like this movie's awesome <laughs> all right well i guess i would circle back to you oh me first again okay yeah i can start that um I, as I mentioned, I really like looking so deep into a horror movie. Like, mm-hmm. even if it's, like, not, like, the scariest or, like, not, like, the most interesting thing, I'm like, what are they trying to do with this? Um, and I like to see, like, the intention that the filmmakers put into it. So, like, practical effects. Mm-hmm. I love, like, trying to see how they do their effects or like get like their shots like to work especially in like some older movies that like are trying to do like supernatural things but like don't have the modern day effects to do it um and also like i'm a big fan of like queer and like fem- feminist like subtext in them like it's always so fun to look into mm-hmm. and probably like most of like the movies i would consider to be my favorites are all about like one person kind of going crazy or like just like one person like going down like a path into horror in whatever way that means for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, luckily for you, I say like we haven't already watched the movie we're going to cover next time. Uh, We can talk a whole lot about that next episode. I'm teasing it a whole lot. We're just so excited. (laughs) Evidently. Oh, yeah, that is really about a person just... Mm -hmm. Woo, going down, going down the oh, shitter. <laughs> That's probably not a good way to say it. Well, um, Falling into madness? Probably. Uh, a downward spiral. Yeah, but there like a downward spiral with a body count. <laughs> so um, I guess I'll take this. I'm so sorry, Sean. So kind of the aspects that I really look for in horror are, one, I love atmosphere. Two, I love cinematography, which is strange considering I am uh, really going to school for neither of those things. But how a shot is framed can convey so much by saying literally nothing. And um, kind of with this modern wave of quote unquote elevated horror, you know, there are some gripes to have with that term, but I feel like it applies well enough. It is so clever in how each and every shot is put together to kind of build this mounting sense of dread that sometimes until the climax of the movie, and sometimes not at all, never gets paid off, which is what I really love about it. Like what that, what all of those elements coming together like leaves you with. Yeah, because I think the best thing that a piece of art can do in general is make you think once you stop watching it yeah and that is like the number one key to that for me Mm -hmm. i think horror like especially should be like the genre that sticks with you Mm -hmm. just that like makes you kind of scared to go (laughs) to sleep that night gives you new phobias i i think i think i might just have to reflect what you guys have been saying because you guys have just described all of my favorite parts well of, that's awesome of then. horror uh-huh. i mean you guys have covered like the absolute best aspects of it because mm-hmm. when you're 
you said um when you're left with like left thinking when you're left feeling a certain way after a horror movie you know that movie you know change you a little bit all right so i'm also going to steal your part natalia my part kind of uh segueing on from the things that we really like about horror movies let's talk about some things that we like less or would change about Uh the genre in general um you mind if I start this off? Of course. You so, can. like, one thing that I forgot to say with the previous one, and like, this is this will lead into like my least favorite parts of horror, but like, some gore is kind of sick. Absolutely. Like, it's kind of fun to see, see like what kind of like nonsense they'll pull mm-hmm. and like how they'll pull it off. Yeah. But like, I'm definitely not a big fan of like excessive gore or violence in a movie. Like, especially if it feels like targeted towards something Mm -hmm. like there's like a difference between like horrifying you and just like being like ew this seems targeted because that's a woman or something of the like it gets to a point of excess yeah it no longer becomes fun like i feel like you got to be a little bit tasteful with it or like if you're gonna go crazy have it be like the payoff to like a whole movie you know like have either of you guys seen uh, Cabin in the Woods? Yes. Yes? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. You guys know that scene where they're like, they've gotten into the facility and they let all of the monsters out? Mm-hmm. That's a good payoff for like excessive yeah. vibe. Like that is awesome. Because up until that point, that movie was not gore free, but it was relatively tame. Yeah, it was like, oh, it's just like the zombie hillbilly torture family like and like they're just like targeting these college students but like seeing like a whole facility get massacred Mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah but like and i try to avoid movies that are like more excessive so i don't even have a good example of like what would be well actually i have one um there's like a scene in terrifier where a woman gets sawed in half and like I don't. I don't want to watch that. Vertically. I'm not a fan of it. I was gonna say. I. I feel like, if you, if your favorite movie is Terrifier, if your favorite horror movie, God forbid, if your favorite movie is Terrifier, <laughs> but, um, we're probably not gonna review it. So probably not. Both. I'm sorry. Both for the sake of good taste and also for the sake of. Are wanting... you telling our audience that they have bad taste? <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, we, so... we're actually the only ones with good taste. You are so very valid. Yeah, you... we have microphones and a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, Sean, would you like to answer? Yes, I would love to. Um, again, I hate to piggyback off of you, but excessive gore. I'm a very squeamish person. If I could be a doctor, um, or if I was a doctor, I'd throw up every day. Um, (laughs) (laughs) and so excessive gore is like really too much for me, but that's more of a personal thing. I think what I really don't like is when that is all that's scary about your movie. Mm-hmm. It's that, and if your entire movie is jump scares, yeah. which mm-hmm. both great tools in a horror movie, but they are not standalone aspects. Um, They've been used excessively. Absolutely. Like and people over rely. You mm-hmm. almost get desensitized to it after a while if it's not built up. Because, like, a jump scare is only as scary as the energy that was placed before it. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, the terrifier again. Any kind of like <laughs> mm-hmm. gross, like, g- God forbid, like fecal horror that's Ooh. like. Is that, is that in that movie? It's, I believe, the first one. Yeah. Ooh, that's gross. I don't want to d- describe what the clown does, but it's it's very gross. I assume it has okay. something to do with fecal matter. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. To piggyback off of that, <laughs> um, my answer was also going to be jump scares. While I, there are elements that I definitely like about this movie, I think one of the biggest offenders in this category would be the movie Sinister. <gasps> you don't like Sinister? No, I do like okay. Sinister. But at a certain point, baby girl, we need to tone it down because it's, it gets to a point where it's not even effective. It's just kind of annoying. I'm like trying to like remember like which jump scares like you're talking about. Sinister is a weird example because it builds up a lot mm-hmm. in kind of the way that I like. 
but it also the payoff happens too much to the point yeah. that it feels it's almost exhausting to yeah. have to keep experiencing over yeah. and over again like those tapes yeah yeah i love those tapes those tapes are fun they're so cool and it has ethan hawk <laughs> <laughs> i love him <laughs> for a second i confused ethan hawk with tony hawk <laughs> pro skater in that movie <laughs> i think that movie would be fixed if like he could just skateboard with i forgot the name of the um the demon in that the grinch uh i don't think that's his name <laughs> <laughs> well um i think that's a good segue into our next question um Let's well see. i actually i have one more thing that oh. i i would add um i have like my, i have like notes written down but like i don't I don't read all of them whenever I'm answering. I'm just like, oh, these ones are like what I'm feeling. Yeah. But like um, one thing that really angers me when I watch a horror movie is when like all the character actions are just so stupid and like not believable. Mm -hmm. And like you're just watching it. And it's like so frustrating to see them make all of the wrong decisions. Not even in like a, oh, like they're like stressed way. Just like a no human person would do this. This is stupid. Yeah. Um. That definitely uh brings down my enjoyment of a movie. Absolutely. <laughs> to like to a certain extent, I I understand that because if everybody made the right decisions in a movie, then there would be no movie. But like, it's be conflict. It's scarier. But especially one thing that makes it extremely effective is somebody making the right decision and it's still not yeah. working. No, that's like. The worst thing, it's like the hopelessness. Mm -hmm. You have to be hopeless in a horror movie. Absolutely. <laughs> um, cool. If you're not, then that's just a drama. Yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah, like, I, then it's just boring. I'm like, oh, no, you're sad. But it's like, oh, no, you're sad and there's a monster. Like, um, <laughs> it's I guess scary. I would probably fill this into, like, the horror thriller zone. Uh, ready or not. That's a horror. Yeah. Basically, the, poor, scary. <laughs> absolutely. The protagonist in that movie does literally just about everything and only ends up getting saved by a show of sheer luck at the end, which is like kind of an extremely terrifying thought. You can fight tooth and nail and still, you know. I mean, I think that one plays into the class aspect of it. Definitely. Where this, I don't know if she's like, lower class or what but she's definitely she, not wealthy. she's not that yeah she's entering a very wealthy family mm -hmm. and she only survives no matter how much she struggled just because the rich people and happened to be getting effed over yeah by something else mm -hmm. so <laughs> um that's very reminiscent of like parasite definitely yeah and i can which that understand. one I would consider less of a horror, actually. I would still say I, it, it falls into the horror category. It, it is like a more weird thriller. Yeah. IMO. Less yeah. blood. Yeah, but there definitely is yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, like with the, the, end. the climax yeah. of the film. Yeah. Sure, sure. But, like, there's, like, a lot of movies with a lot of blood that, like... That's fair. <laughs> that aren't horror. Any, like... Genres are a marketing tactic anyways. <laughs> yeah, they really are. Horror is whatever we want to cover Horror is whatever we decide is scary enough. And or we just want to cover on the podcast, we'll just call it horror. Yeah. Um, which maybe some of these movies will be picked from this next question. Um, <laughs> Segway. Yeah. Uh, here I'm asking, what scares you the most, and are there any movies that you're too afraid to watch because of that? Okay, I will take this one first. Yeah. Because I have got two. Awesome. I also have two. I do not mess with spiders. Or eyes. Okay. That's a weird combination. It really is. Well, spiders have a lot of eyes. Think That's about. true. But not like... It's exponentially scarier <laughs> when they're around. <laughs> not, Scary to the eighth power. Not <laughs> things like with a lot of eyes, but I... Torture. I torture. Mutilation. Yeah. Like um, mm. the movie Would You Rather. Love it. Oh, the poster I, I is like... I have to skip that scene. No, I... Because otherwise, it makes me want to crawl out of my skin. It's kind of like... You know... And I, I hate to, like, uh, bring my answer in here. co opt my question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, But, like, if you're ever watching something where, like, someone's, like, hands are getting messed up and like, he, Ooh. like, wince at it... The other one was going to be fingernails. Yeah. Oh, God. No. I don't, I don't uh, do that. Um, but, like... 
at least like if your hand you can like hold it. You can't I can't hold my eyes. But to watch the movie, your eyes have to be open seeing them get hurt. Oh, I didn't even think about like your instinct is just like to squeeze rip your eyes, eyes closed. closed. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, like <laughs> like it makes my eyes hurt thinking it's about scary. it. Scary. Yeah. Um that and um that one death, I cannot remember what Final Destination movie it is. Oh, wait, describe but, it. Um, so this lady is going in for some kind of uh, optometry thing. Probably, I think, to get LASIK, Ooh. which is something that I have a whole lot of experience with because I have very terrible eyes and have been considering getting LASIK. Mm-hmm. And um, the optometrist leaves while she is like strapped down. Because, you know, they have to strap your head in so you don't move. Yeah. And then the laser starts going off. And then she finally manages to, like, wring herself out of it after getting her eye just just real messed up. And then she slips, and she is on a several-story tall building. Falls out the window, crashes onto the floor below, and the final scene of her is her eye popping out. Ooh. And then getting run over. They ran over the eye? Yeah. Final Destination is not a very good franchise. I don't know. I kind of love, like, the... I'll talk about it more in a later question. <laughs> okay. Um, Sean, are there... I don't know if there's any I wouldn't be willing to watch. I, I'm definitely avoidant of the Saw movies just because mm-hmm. of my whole, like, gore thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, It's definitely, like, not my favorite um, aspect of horror. I think... Um. To kind of go more into the question of, like, what scares me the most, um, it would definitely have to be, like, a an antagonist or a villain that is not bound to any reason or, Ooh. like, physical laws, if you feel me. Uh-huh. Oh, to, like, to quote perhaps the scariest line in all of horror, why are you doing this? Because you were home. Yep. Terrifying. I think I might have hit the nail on the head for Natalia's Yeah, answer, I know. That is but... what I was going to talk about a little bit. I think that my, uh, it's, like, so fun, like, realizing, like, how many of, like, our things are similar. Because, like, if we ever, like, do decide to, like, cover, like, something that includes this, it's going to be, like, I was so scared and we were all so terrified. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm very afraid of home invasion movies. Yeah. So bringing up the strangers terrifies me, and the fact that like they do all that horror just just because you were home, yeah. like no real reason. Because. Like most of my comfort, like whenever I leave a horror movie, is that won't happen to me. Like mm-hmm. that was supernatural, or like I'm not gonna do something that like prompts this on me. Mm-hmm. But just like a random act of horror against me, yeah. home so inv- scary. Home invasion is probably the most realistic thing that could ever happen. Yeah, because it does happen. Probably not to the extent of the strangers. Yeah, but like, why would they choose my home? Yeah, because you were home. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but the other one I was gonna bring up was also gonna be like sp- very like specific bodily mutilations, including eyes. Yeah. And the movie I wrote down that I actually really want to watch, but it kind of freaks me out is Audition. I have heard good things about it. I've also heard good things about it, but I've also heard about the kind of torture that's in it involving faces and needles and wires. And that kind of freaks me out. (laughs) (laughs) But I want to watch it. So be prepared for a potential future episode, dear listeners. Yeah. Um, The next question I have for you guys is, what's your so bad it's good horror pick? And please elaborate why it's so bad it's good. So, mine, which is partially why I brought it up earlier, the Final Destination franchise. Because I am, much like Sean, I I don't like a lot of gore. It is certainly less saw gory, but it's like, you know, it's not exactly squeaky clean. No, definitely not. But I feel like the entire draw of those movies, much like the Saw franchise, is how increasingly elaborately and stupidly can we kill someone? Definitely, yeah. Which, in a uh, kind of a hedonistic sense, I can certainly appreciate. Like, it, you know that you're coming in for the kills, and yeah. you're like, "How? what's going to happen this time? Like, you don't go into any 
movies like Saw or like Final Destination being like, I'm going to get really attached to these characters because I guarantee you with Saw most with Final Destination, all of them will be dead by the end. Like, I mean, the only difference I would say between those two is like Saw, it's like, what are, what's going to, how creative is Jigsaw going to get today? What's he going to decide to play with people's lives with? Yeah, unless you're attached to Jigsaw himself, I think you should not get attached to any of the characters. Yeah, unless like you, I mean, I really like, um, I really like the little puppet, like Jigsaw. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. so cute. Billy the Puppet. Is it, his name's Billy? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm a fake fan. Ooh. I've only seen the first movie. That, um, that will, this will lead me on a very brief tangent. I haven't actually seen the movie, but it is, in my opinion, extremely clever to set saw 10 like following john gramer as the protagonist because that is kind of the main critique that's been leveled against that franchise that like there's not really much of a plot no they just keep giving him other reasons to be upset at people for like not taking their lives or for taking their lives for granted Mm -hmm. like that one dude in saw one whose big crime the thing that he was covered in flammable jelly for and made to walk across broken glass was that he called out sick to work. <laughs> Literally. Honestly, I think that would, that would scare me out of calling out sick to work. <laughs> they, you know, the executives were like, you there, know what we should, you know what we should put in? <laughs> there was It'd one. be really good to keep our morale high. Jigsaw is so capitalist pilled, man. <laughs> He's so. I guarantee you there was one employee who kept calling in and they were like, we're going to show you. <laughs> this is what happens to naughty employees who call out of work. <laughs> Literally one of the most like excruciating deaths in the franchise because he called out of work. Hey, uh, is that in the first movie you said? Yes. And I um, think it gets a lot more excruciating. I would say being poisoned, having to carry a tiny little tea light while covered in flammable liquid and having to walk on broken glass to find a combination amid several combinations around the room is probably pretty bad. There's someone who like, and like this might, so I know a little bit about the franchise, um, but like I haven't watched all of them. Um, but like at some point there's like a fake Jigsaw um, yeah. that's like a poser. Uh, Mark so he So he gives like impossible things to like actually mm-hmm. win. But like one of them has like hooks put through like their Achilles tendons yeah. that they have to and his jaw yeah you like, can't just rip off your jaw like, and just be fine no like some i, I that might be a little bit more yeah. excruciating this is um no offense to that first guy <laughs> another one of like my <laughs> embarrassing to admit one of the things i was very obsessed with as a child was saw i to this day have not watched a full saw movie but i could tell you Every trap, probably in order. Really? Yeah, because I was obsessed That's with them. That's impressive. It's really not. No, it is. What are you talking about? That's <laughs> so impressive. impressive. It's weird, though. <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> like, up to what movie? Because, like, if you were a kid, like, a lot of them wouldn't have been out yet. Probably, probably up until Saw 3D. Okay. If you could get to, like, Saw 7. Sorry, not to put down your accomplishment. But, like, if you get to get up to Saw 7, like, I'd be like, oh, my God. I don't think I could tell you the ones in Jigs. Oh, I think I could tell you the ones in Jigsaw. I couldn't tell you the ones in Spiral, and I couldn't tell you the ones in 10. I guess we got to study up. Evidently. Just a whole Jig, a whole Saw episode. (laughs) I mean, that'd be. Probably, we will probably do that. Yeah. (laughs) Counting how many times. every second of it. Counting how many times we throw up while binging 10 movies. (laughs) Yeah. We just put them all at once. (laughs) Yeah. It's like perfect idea. It's like layered on the screen. Yeah. Or just like surround ourselves in monitors and just like spin in a circle. That is basically what Saw does. (laughs) All right. So I will take one through four. Natalia (laughs) will take. Oh, you take the okay ones? The the good ones? Yeah. I I see how it is. I heard the newer. If I take the middle ones, I'll get the schlock and you can get the newer ones, which are apparently like people consider them really good now. The, The newer ones are. I've heard they were like. Just very average horror movies. Um, but it's, he's, he's back. Spiral. <laughs> oh my god. Spiral and Jigsaw were both like pretty average. Apparently, Saw Ten is actually quite good. All right. Well, um, Sean, so, what's your least favorite? Oh, sorry. Oh, I I sufficiently lied when I said that would be a short tangent. So, Sean, what's your favorite? <laughs> what's, what's your least favorite? 
Uh, what's your so bad it's good horror movie pick? Yes, that is the next question. Yeah. Yes. My favorite so bad it's good is arguably not horror at all. Um, actually, I might have two, but my I would say my official favorite is probably the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That is, an, um, we it's have so um, we have a love it an episode a, idea. I think for... I found like a like a screening of it that's going to happen on Halloween. Oh my gosh! Yep. At the um, Rialto, I believe. At the Rialto, where I, is that? I think the one I saw was at Ruby Deluxe. Actually, might be that one. They they have somebody is somebody in Raleigh is doing a shadow cast of it, which cool. is how you should watch it. I want to the I've... first time. You should go to your local theater that is playing it. There are just people in lingerie. Um, <laughs> If you live near a university uh, or a college, they are probably them. they probably have it. Um, yeah. I will be the one to start it here at NC State. <laughs> the character that um, Tim Curry plays is like iconic. Rocky. Yeah, Rocky. That's not uh, Rocky. No, no, I lied. Doctor Frank 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 I'm sorry. Rocky, I'm sorry. I'm here with a bunch no, of fake no. hands. He plays Rocky Balboa. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we're lying. Yeah, just in case you all didn't know, Rocky Balboa is in Rocky Horror Picture Show. He's the Rocky in the picture show. <laughs> yeah. I'm so I'm so silly. Yeah, we are. This is a completely factual podcast. Yeah, we are authorities on horror. And we if you are disagree, so fact-checked. We are so DJ independent fact-checkers. <laughs> they also, it is technically a double feature. There is a sequel. There I've is. never seen it. Um, there's a, I know there's a remake. There is a sequel. Um, it's called like high voltage or something. Um, we are our computer guys on the <laughs> <laughs> literally. Can you fact check that for us? Yeah. I say as we are both typing it. Yeah, because like there's it's a called shock treatment. Shock treatment. Yep. There's a sequel, I, not, not a sequel, it. a remake with uh Victoria Justice, a uh, victorious. Who does she play? That uh, has Janet. Gotta be really. She yeah, pl- she plays Rocky. She is <laughs> she, not Rocky. She is Rocky Balboa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you gotta go. Don't watch it in at your house. Go to like a live showing because it is mm-hmm. clinically insane. Isn't like a big part of live productions audience interaction? Absolutely, it's yeah. the callbacks. Yeah. Um, you throw things on stage. Um, mm-hmm. sometimes they'll let you have like water guns and stuff. Like, um, it's ridiculous. Do you um, think they let me throw a dumbbell on stage? No. Like a foam one or like a real one. Can a you throw a full dumbbell? Do you think I can throw a full dumbbell? I'm not Don't answer obligated that question. to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I need my lawyer present yeah. before I answer these questions. All right. Um, the my top. so bad is good horror pick. Um, I also feel like is a bit of um, like I don't think this movie is actually bad. I just watched it with the wrong crowd. Um, it's Reanimator. Ooh, that's a good which one. Reanimator? I hardly know her. Uh-huh. I'm don't really I think it's an 80s horror movie. Um I think so. And a lot of it is them like trying to figure out like how to have like their horror effects on a much lower budget. Mm-hmm. Um and so watching it it was just like so fun to like notice everything that's like oh obviously like that's not a real severed head that's talking, but like it's just so clever like how they find ways to shoot it to be able to depict that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, you know, more low-budget horror might not be as effective, but, like, I just love it as a movie. And I think the people I watched it with were just wrong. (laughs) The movie was awesome. (laughs) I haven't... This is kind of going back to least favorite parts of the genre. Mm -hmm. I do not like anything. That's great. (laughs) (laughs) I... Hate all I hate horror movies. I do not like horror movies or just movies in general, for that matter, that go in knowing it's a bad movie. Yeah. Because, like, kind of as the adage goes, the only true camp is unintentional camp. You can't try to be camp. There has like, to be a labor of love given to that movie for it to have any kind of like pull. Yeah. Because if it's meant to be bad, like. It's just another Sharknado movie. Was, like, we're not doing Sharknado 3. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's like, it has to, if it's bad, and you watch it, and you can tell how much they put into it, mm-hmm. then it's good. Like, um, like The Room, like any 
uh, Neil Breen film, you know that they go into that and they're like, I'm going to make a masterpiece. And then that comes out of it. And I love that. I don't think I've ever actually seen The Room. There is always time. I've only seen The Disaster Artist. <laughs> <laughs> Which has one of my favorite actors, Josh Hutchinson. Oh. Who's going to be in FNAF later this month. <laughs> From Trapped in the Island with Joss Hutcherson? That's a reference that maybe two people listening to this will I get. don't know what you're yeah. talking about. And I, two people are not us. <laughs> and I will not elaborate further. I just thought about so. like, okay. the second cool. Hunger Games uh, movie. There's an island in that. If you know, yeah. you know. And if you don't, you should know. Okay. I'm sorry for not knowing. Next question. Next question. <laughs> um, This one is, which horror character would be your dream role to play? And like this is kind of open to like villain main character just like anything and whatever movie or archetype i, I i've got one i Let's would want it. to be aaron from your next she i could not pull it off this is let me get that out there immediately i could not pull this role off but i would desperately want to be here because she is so cool she is basically the nightmare of any home invader because she grew up on a survivalist compound and like she's the final girl who just brutalizes them in Good. the latter half of the movie. Girl boss. Like Slay. she <laughs> <laughs> she is so cool. I love her so much. She is one of my favorite horror characters ever. So I would die to play a role like that. You want to be girl boss slay. I want to be girl boss slay. I feel like you can emphasis like, on slay. Start like learning those survivalist skills to like become her. Do it in real life. I mean, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Boy Scouts, it helps. Yeah. Helps you. <laughs> I will say that um, mine is a bit of a cliche, as most of my answers probably have been, um, but I would think it would be really funny if I was Patrick Bateman. <laughs> <gasps> because I know you don't know what I look like, but I kind of just look like a white guy. Um, Very, can confirm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, beyond me just like loving that movie, like not in a, you know, a white man kind of way, but. <laughs> um, not in a, the, you are inspired by Patrick like Bateman me. way. No, oh, no. Not I mean, in that kind of way. He's my inspiration. I just think just like me for real. <laughs> I just somebody losing their mind and not knowing if something is real or not is such a fun role because Which. you you basically have no baseline for your character. Yeah, unreliable you, narrator. Exactly. So you like even as an actor, I don't even know if they gave the actor like a like the true story. Like, is this what actually happened? So like, it is just what is going on in his head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe I live that every day. <laughs> maybe we all are too now. But there's a little bit of Patrick Bayman in all in all yeah, of us. Absolutely. <laughs> it would also just be nice to be forced to get that jacked for a role. Oh yeah. That's true. No, like getting that motivation. You I mean it's probably really hard to keep on though. I had assume yeah. so. Like when your job is to just work out because, all the time. Like the entire uh premise of the Patrick Bayman character is that he is ridiculous he is ridiculous and like no real person could do i want to put that cat like in that, that atm machine <laughs> <laughs> oh i do actually have um a secondary character that okay. i just remembered uh kind of on the topic of not knowing if things are real i would actually like to personally thank our dearest hostess natalia for introducing me to this movie lily from black swan yes because she oh is God. so cool I didn't even think about Black Swan when I was brainstorming this. You can steal my answer. I'm not going to steal your answer. I don't think I could pull off, like, uh, I don't remember what Natalie Portman's character's name in that is. She's not Lily. Lily is Mila, uh, Mila, Mila Kunis. Kunis. Yeah. Also, Ukrainian rep. Love her. <laughs> <laughs> also, star of hit movie American Psycho 2. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, that movie is just so bad. <laughs> it's just bad. With, um, with Lily, really... Everything that I love about her was embodied in the scene after, uh, let's say, a steamy night home Intimacy. between uh, two characters that didn't actually happen. When confronted about it, 
Lily's first and only reaction was, was I good? <laughs> Slay. I'd love, ask the same thing. Love her. <laughs> um, I also came up with two answers for this. Um, my first one is I really want to be one of the zombies in The Last of Us. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> like their makeup effects and like the way they move. Fierce. I want to do that. The acting would be fun, but would the the prosthetics would really bother me. I just oh. I want to wear. I want to look at extended amount of actually, time. Actually, I don't know if mm. they have like eyeball. If they can actually see themselves, but like, I would love to just like to see myself like that. Anything. I'm like looking in the mirror and I'm like, whoa, I look cool. I feel <laughs> like true. I look infected. <laughs> I feel like that is something that you would have to do in one take, because God forbid you have to do that makeup twice. I would. I think. I feel like I would love it. I would hate it because. Like, sometimes you hear, specifically in horror movies, because prosthetics are just such a big deal in it, mm-hmm. just how long it takes yeah. to get into makeup every day. I would hate it. Because you just have to sit there. Yeah, I could, like, put on some, like, some some TV shows, <laughs> movie. Do you I... think you'd be mad at me if I just slept? No. I'm sure people do it all the time. Probably. Practical effects are always worth it. I'm just going to say that. They are. Yeah. And that's Definitely. why I appreciate The Last of Us so much yeah. for having all of them be practical. Absolutely. And like mm-hmm. just like the physical movement of them. It's yeah. so cool. And it's like actually restricted to what a person, like an infected person yeah. Yeah. could do. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to do that so bad. Um, my like, if I could play a character role, um, I don't know. I feel like I could pull off uh, Needy from Jennifer's Body. Ooh. Like, I feel like if I was going to be, like, a starring girl, that's who I would want to be. I feel like I could honestly see you as either Needy or Jennifer. Aw, thank you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play both of them. <laughs> yeah. Liv and Maddie. Like Liv and Maddie. Just like Liv and Maddie. Yeah. That'd be so funny. But one is you in, like, a very god-awful blonde wig. Like, Party City. I, I have one of those, it's actually. Not, it's not blonde. It's yellow. Ooh. So the so next question. The you next question. To take us away. Um, our next question is, who's your favorite horror icon? I, Rocky. again. <laughs> Ro- which one? Rocky. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Bowinkle? <laughs> <laughs> Out of pocket. Sorry. <laughs> Wreck- <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> Uh, the the big aliens from Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> okay, go. On. Um, I I'm going to have to be another basic B again. Mm-hmm. Jack Torrance from The Shining. That's not basic. I would say. I wouldn't say it is, but like, he Jack Nicholson's acting in that movie is so ridiculous, and I love it. Not mm-hmm. ridiculous in like a bad way, but like, he's just so exaggerated, and you're like. This dude I'm scared. is crazy. Mm-hmm. And like he like I mean just that movie alone is obviously I've said at the at the top of this podcast favorite horror movie. Mm-hmm. And honestly I I'd, I'd go back and say I'd play Jack Nicholson's character cuz I <laughs> if I if he could just teach me how to make half those faces I'd be happy. Honestly I mean, I don't know if that was the origin of it, but the Kubrick stare. Like, yeah. that's just such an iconic part of that film. Yeah. When he gets slid Which, like a whiskey and yeah. he's just like looking at you like. You all couldn't see that, but I just did my best attempt at the face. Which. Can uh, you do it again? No. Aww. Yeah, do it for the mic. <laughs> Can't no, actually. I was going to say for me because I didn't see it. Sucks. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> Who's yes. your favorite horror icon, Mason? Oh, that's a lovely question. Um. Unfortunately, it's not named, so I can't say the character from It Follows. <laughs> but um, the ST Demon. <laughs> not actually. No, it really I isn't ST Demon. In terms of sheer iconicness of design, Billy the Puppet. Mm. Amazing choice. Truly. He's like, so cute. He's He really toes the line of like, I could kind of see that being cute but also what he does put people in traps i don't think billy the puppet no but like he is 
he is John Kramer's persona. He's like, this is me. This is my little guy. I'm going to, he, he's going to be my voice. Uh, Billy the Puppet, at least within the lore of Saw, was originally made for John Kramer's unborn son. Which, why would you give that to a child? My favorite horror icon is probably Samara from The Ring. Ooh. Um, she just nice. like embodies, because as a kid I used to be so afraid of strange little girls with long hair covering their faces, including The Grudge. But like, I just feel like Samara like so well encapsulates that. And my runner-up pick is Sam from Trick or Treat. Ooh, that's just a good because one. I really like how like Spirit Halloween has like adopted him. Like, they yeah. love that little guy, and he's everywhere now. I'm just so happy for him. The lollipop cycle, I have to say, is, I love it. So it's slay. so slay, clearly. <laughs> he just wants so. everyone to love Halloween, and if you don't... We are, um, we are considering <laughs> doing an episode where we compare the original and remake, the American remake of the Ring franchise, where I will get very heated, because I like Ringu more than I like Ring. I like the ring mm. so much. I just love like the like the Pacific Northwest vibe to it. I like the the nineties Japan vibe. Okay, mm. it's really just like a battle of the vibes. I'm gonna be Truly. honest. I haven't watched either, so, so I will be an impartial we're gonna be like, judge. We're gonna like have presentations Sean, set out. Literally, it's like here's yeah. why. Even though my version's better. Even though the audience at <laughs> home an cannot see, podcast. cannot no, see. For, no, just for me. Just, just for you, oh, okay. Sean. No. I appreciate that. So <laughs> you're not even on recording. This no. is just. It's in just the studio. studio. <laughs> um, so we have one more question to wrap this up. Um, it's what horror movie do you want to make everyone watch? You all uh, at home cannot see this, but I'm holding up my notepad and tapping where I wrote down it follows. Because again, I feel like that is just such a great encapsulation of the. To quote our our motto at this school, think and do, <laughs> attitude that can go into horror, how you can make something from nothing with just like a green screen and a dream. <laughs> you can make something absolutely perfect, in my opinion. So if you want to get into horror, I would suggest it follows. One, it's not extremely scary. Like, it's not jump scare scary. But it is extremely tense. And, like, I would say it is scary. Yeah. Like, having something constantly following you and not sure how or when it will manifest into mm -hmm. your life. It is another one of those things where it will, kind of like we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, it will have you thinking long after and very paranoid about anybody walking in a straight line. All right, Natalia, what is your recommendation for everybody um and i hope i can get you guys to watch this one um i want to make everyone watch mandy Ooh, mm. um, i'm a big nicholas cage fan so I it would is in fact a nicholas cage movie Which, but he is so good in it he, and the he um be a good actor when he wants to be he just doesn't want to be very often i think also just like he also just has like one really good character and when you can utilize that character. What would you say that one really good character is? Nicolas Cage. <laughs> when he is yeah. himself, Ooh, in a way. In the hit video game, Dead by Daylight, mm. Nicolas Cage is a character. Yeah. And he plays essentially a caricature of Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Hmm. And I would say probably one of my favorite roles of his. In this movie, he's a recovering alcoholic whose wife is taken from him. Mm -hmm. oh, Tragically. So is it... Oh, taken like her life is taken. Yeah, or is it, like he's getting her back. Mm, he's getting revenge. Oh, okay. And it's awesome. And like that movie has like it's vi it's very visually striking. Like mm -hmm. lots of like pinks and purples, even yeah. though like it takes place mostly at night. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. and off the walls, bonkers violence. That is what Nicholas Cage it's, does best. He goes full throttle. It's and so I feel like good. Mandy is a perfect movie to kind of actually show that off in a good light he's amazing in it mm -hmm. when he can scream it's he, a great it's a great he movie. screams a lot yeah. <laughs> and i guess that leaves me unfortunately um i have two recommendations because i couldn't settle on one 
Um, more the merrier. I know. My first recommendation to you all would be the classic Night of the Living Dead. Um, just because it's a good foundational, kind of good foundational movie to watch that's kind of like the... It, it is one of the only super old horror movies that actually kind of holds up. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually haven't seen it. It, it attacks a lot of um, good themes. I mean, in the end, it's very tragic, but it like definitely has a strong commentary on like race relations and sexism. And it's it's very weird to have that in a movie from like the 60s. Yeah. It was like one of the progenitors of the horror genre as we know it today. Yeah. So I, I can't recommend that enough. And I think the movie that I'm going to make these two watch um, that I <laughs> always recommend to people and I haven't had the best hit rate, but that's almost why I tell people to watch it. It is the Blair Witch Project. Ooh. Ooh. I It is such a hit or miss movie for people. Not that it is inherently good or bad. It is just such a stressful movie. <laughs> That if you watch it for too long or too many times, you're just like, when will this end? <laughs> we have some very special and perhaps very impractical plans if we do a Blair Witch episode. <laughs> so I've never seen the Blair Witch Project, yeah. but I've seen the Scooby-Doo version of it. I have too. The Scooby-Doo version? There's a Scooby-Doo I, version that like Cartoon Network put out. I can also quote a scene from that from memory. Which one? Um... Is it my fault that you wore high heels on a hiking trip? At least I try to look feminine. <laughs> and then Velma just stands there, gagged. I would that be is the too. Only, that is the only part of that movie that I, I know about. <laughs> Please watch our future episodes for more accurate impressions. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, well, I mean... I think that was like, I think that was a pretty effective introduction to all it was of us. Fantastic yeah. episode. Yeah. I hope, I hope people, I hope people made it through. I know that was a thriller. I would so say damn fun. near a horror movie <laughs> to listen to. Um, but if you lasted this long, we really hope you tune into us next time. We have a very special movie for you. We can. We can probably say one. what it is, right? We can, yeah, because we the, are I think literally gonna go if, record it now. If yeah. they've listened to it, they if they've listened it. this far, you guys deserve it. You got yeah. a treat. Who would like to say it? We will be watching. Drum roll, please. <laughs> we will be watching The Babadook, Yay! a movie that none of us had seen going into it, but no. I think we all have some very strong opinions of. So many thoughts Absolutely. to bring. Absolutely. Yeah. Well. So thank you all so very much for listening. I hope to see you again next time. On the next episode of Cinema Cub. Bye bye. Intro and outro music for this episode is credited to Bashkir Horror Re-Edition 2014 by Valerie and the Greedies and is licensed under an A Attribution Non-Commercial Share Like License.